were on the march to occupy the Chiricahua Reservation by force, breaking the sacred promise made to Cochise. And in wild defiance, Cochise proclaimed that this would mean full-scale war again, to the death. Cochise, you must listen to me before it is too late. We will need many more arrowheads. Twenty bullets for each man. Those left over divide evenly. Cochise, you cannot go on with this! I know the treaty guarantees that there will be no soldiers on the Burn reservation. Burn the points well, Tina. Let the fire harden the wood until it becomes like iron. Cochise, will you stop and will you listen to me? I have listened to you. For one full moon, I have waited and I have listened. Now an army marches into Apache land, and I will listen no longer. Cochise, you know I have tried. Yes, you have tried. But your words have fallen on ears that are close to honor. No one will listen to you. Tomorrow, soldiers will be on my land. Cochise, they can always be made to get off again, if you will give me time. You know as well as I do, Agent Jeffords. When soldiers come to Indian land, they never get off. What you say is true, but war is not the answer. It is the only answer. We will fight, and we will die. But we will not let soldiers stand over us with guns. There is one thing I have not yet tried. To speak to the general face to face. And go, and speak to him, and tell him this for me. When the first white soldier puts his foot across Chiricahua boundary, then the peace is broken. And once again, the Americans are at war with the Chiricahua Apache. Cochise. If there is no other way, then I must fight, too, with my own people. A man will do as he must. But this will not change anything between us. We are still brothers. General Edwards. What's your name, mister? Just a minute. General Edwards, I'm Jeffords, the Indian agent. Read your messages, Jeffords. All of them. Nothing to talk about. I'll have Sergeant Matthews check the supply mules. They look sore footed this morning. Yes, sir. Didn't anything I had to say mean anything to you? Indian agents mean nothing to me, Jeffords. When I was appointed commanding general of the Arizona Department, I was given full authority to run this show as I saw fit. I've been in this business a long time, Jeffords, and I see fit to put soldiers on this reservation, just as they're on every other reservation in the country. I'm not questioning your experience, General, and I know your reputation. But you're new out here. You don't know the background of the peace Cochise made. They're checking them, sir. Blasted alkali desert. They have to wrap those mules hooves to keep them from rotting off. General, Cochise is still at peace. He wants to stay that way. Good. And we shouldn't have any trouble with him. Uh, send out a patrol and have them uh, pick out a place to camp tonight, Major. Then I want you to see to it that the men are fed and bedded down early. I want them fresh and rested when we move tomorrow. Yes, sir. Group from Adams and Johnson, fall out. Forward, ho! General, you know that Cochise has never been beaten. He didn't accept peace, he granted it. And there were certain things guaranteed to him in writing. One of those guarantees was that there would never be troops stationed on the reservation. It was part of the treaty. That was foolish, dangerous, and impractical. Blasted man, why should an exception be made for the tribe with the bloodiest fighting record of all? No reason, General, except General Howard gave his word. Tactical concession, and in my opinion, an unnecessary one. It was quite necessary at the time, General. Because without that promise, Cochise would never have quit fighting. And Cochise has kept his word. I 
got to convince you that you don't need troops on the reservation to guard the Chiricahuas. Because you and this Cochise are friends? Jeffords, let me spell it out for you again, slowly. I'm not going to base my Indian policy on anything as uncertain as the friendship between two men. Especially when one of those men is the deadliest fighter this country has ever seen. My order stands. The troops march under the Chiricahua Reservation at first light tomorrow. And now, Mr. Jeffords, if you'll excuse me, please. General. You'd better hear me out now, because tomorrow morning you may be riding into a full-scale war. And this might be the last time in your life you'll ever get a chance to listen to anything. All right, Mr. Jeffords. Talk. When I first met Cochise, I was in charge of the mail run between Tucson and Bowie. As you know, it was a tough time for Americans then. The Apaches controlled the territory completely. Most of the small ranches and towns were wiped out. Cochise had Tucson practically in a state of siege. Nothing went in or out without strong army guards. But Cochise and I had become friends. He gave his word that nothing would happen to the mail riders. Cochise kept his word. From that day on, we carried the mail in perfect safety through country where an American alone was usually dead. And even army patrols could not ride without paying a tribute in blood to the Apaches. <laughs> Better go find yourself a bottle or a fist fight and forget it, Tom. I wish I could. You've seen killing like that before on both sides. Not just the killing, Milt. You don't know what it felt like to be held there helpless by friends watching your own people being shot down. Oh, this rotten war. Why does it have to be this way anyway? Don't ask me. I didn't start. Milt. Cochise is my best friend. He saved my life. He's protected me and my mail riders. He's not my enemy. You sure proved that. I lived with his people, Milt. I've eaten with him. I've, I've laughed with him. How can I fight the Chiricahuas? How can I fight Cochise? Are you thinking what I think you're thinking? I can't straddle a fence forever, Milt. You are. You're thinking about Captain Ward's talk of how you ought to be scouting for the army. How long can I sit back and do nothing? You're getting the mail through. That's more than anybody else could do. That's not enough. Doesn't help my conscience any. Conscience, boy. Between that and Captain Ward, I suppose you just naturally have to go out and get yourself killed. Like some darned hero. I think I've got to pour some sense into you. Come on. Let's go to the saloon. Oh, thanks, Milt. Move! We got mail to deliver.
Looks like you've had a rough time, Ward. Do you really care, Mr. Jeffords? Yes, I do. Enough to change your mind about being a scout? Ward, he told you no a dozen times. Let him be. No. I want him to tell me again. I just lost a lot of good men out there because I didn't have a scout who knew the Apaches in the country. Those men who died were Americans. And I know an American who could have saved us from riding into that ambush. That's you, Jeffords. Look, he's got a job, and it's an important job, too. Important? Yes, I guess letters are important. It's funny, though. I can't help thinking that Green, Carter, Holmes, all those men that died back there in that ambush, that they're more important than a few bits of paper. It sounds silly, doesn't it? You know why I can't scout against the Chiricahua's ward. I know that plenty of American troops will die if you don't. Well, what's the use? I'm sorry I bothered you, Jeffords. <laughs> Help fast. He needed help this morning, Jeffers. Just like those others. Still out there in the desert. Buried. Many sons. Cochise, I have something to tell you. Come, we will talk. Cochise, I have agreed to serve as scout for the army. I had to come here first to tell you. When I leave here, I will become an enemy of your people. You will be a great danger to us. You could remove that danger. I am alone in your camp. These words dishonor both of us. We know it might be this way sometime. Are we not the same, you and I, one to the other? Yes. That is why I had to come here first. To explain what I was doing and why. I know why. Do I not fight your people? What would you think of me if I did not fight by the side of Apaches because of my friendship for you? That is different. No, it is not different. We are men. We cannot turn our backs on our own people. But I know how hard the decision was to make. I am proud of you. Things should be different. They cannot be different. But you and I speak with truth. We still stand higher to each other than our people stand to each other. Tonight, we shall mix our blood. We shall become brothers. When I am to become your enemy? Now, when you are closer to me than my own sons. You are a great man, Cochise. A very great man. It is our brotherhood. And as our blood became one, we became brothers. Blood brothers? Oh, come now, Jeffords. Only children and heathen put faith in any such nonsense. General Edwards, Cochise and I are closer than any two men born of the same parents because we chose to be brothers. If you'll let us work it out together, the Chiricahua Apaches will never break the peace treaty. I'm sorry, Jeffords. I can't risk it. The troops will start moving to the reservation at dawn, just as planned. And one minute later, you'll find yourself in an Indian war. And you'd better win it, General. Because this time there won't be any peace treaty. There won't be any peace until the last Chiricahua warrior is dead. The sun will soon begin to cross the sky, and the soldiers will come. We will be ready for them. Jeffrey, you've been at this thing all night. What are you trying to prove? You and Cochise are friends? Why shouldn't Cochise be your friend? The way I hear it, you're always on his side. You're always fighting for him, like right now. But 
Anybody could be a friend under those conditions. But if you ever turned on him, he'd cut your throat so fast you wouldn't know what happened to you. General, I just told you I joined the Army as a scout. Yes, and the first thing you did was run up and tell Cochise. Warn him so he could stay out of your way, so he wouldn't have to shoot you when he saw you. You think so, General? And maybe you'd better listen to what happened to me after I left Cochise. Our troop was in the thick of it. We took the fight into Cochise's own territory, used his own war trails and favorite ambush positions. Cochise makes it tough. But we must be hurting him, Tom. Every fight costs him a few more warriors. Sometimes even more than a few. That's something we can't replace by steel. We're doing more damage than all the other troops put together. You're the reason for that, Tom. Yeah, I know. Kill you, Nage. Why not? Many Chirakawa have died because of you. Why do you wish to spare me? No! Maybe war, but it is not cold blooded murder. You're a brave man, Nage. As a prisoner, you will be treated fairly. Come on. Let's have the doctor bandage that arm. supplies and ammunition. We've got to get back to the fort. Won't be easy. It's rough country. Perfect for a surprise attack. Cochise undoubtedly knows that we have his nephew prisoner. He'll be waiting for us somewhere. Why don't we make good use of that? Cochise is going to be trying extra hard to get Nage back. Why don't we put Nage in a wagon train, provide it with an escort? That'll just plain invite Cochise to jump us. Can depend on that. And besides Nagay, suppose the wagons are loaded with troops, ready and waiting. This might be our chance. We'll nail Cochise and end this whole bloody business. I'm glad we're out of that canyon. It's a perfect place for an ambush. Cochise wouldn't bushwhack us here. Why not? Probably figures I'm with the wagon. He knows that I know all of his favorite ambush holes. You'd never know which one he'd pick. I know all the back trails, too. Couldn't take a chance that I'd lead soldiers around behind him, turn his ambush into a suicide trap. He'll probably hit us out in the open. Anytime, anywhere. He's out there somewhere, Nagay.
still time for you to circle ahead and use the ambush in Devil's Canyon. It is too dangerous. My brother knows the trail. Kill him, Cochise. Kill him and you can wipe out all the soldiers in Devil's Canyon. Kill him. Add it up, General. Add it up good and carefully. This Indian, this man you think is a wild savage, had a chance to kill me and win one of the biggest victories in his war. But he couldn't do it. He couldn't do it even after he saw me kill his own nephew. Cochise turned his back on battle for the first time in his life. And instead of a victory, he gave himself a big defeat. Why? Because we're brothers sworn and sealed in our blood. And that's what's keeping the peace, General. And that's something your soldiers will never be able to do. Well, it's gone. The troops ready to move out, sir. Thank you. Oh, Major. Daylight. When do your soldiers ride? They are riding, Cochise. Back to the fort. Come, my brother. Let us go home. <laughs> 